we praise the Lord this morning. Oh, thank the Lord for His assurance, amen, of His help, amen, in our daily lives, in our walk with Him, amen, that we don't even have to take a step without the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you love Him this morning? Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like you to turn with me to the John in chapter 1. John in chapter 1. And we'll go to verse 19, John chapter 1 and verse 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? He confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Art thou Elias or Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. I want today for a few moments, you may be seated. I want to go back to verse 23, where John declared who he was. When John declared, I am a voice. I am a voice. And this morning for a few moments, I want to preach to you on this thought. Who are we? Who are we? Before I get started this morning, the Lord dropped something in my heart. I just need to share it, and then I'll get on into this. Uh, I thought about just waiting to tonight and share it, but the Lord just dropped something in my heart for somebody today. You may be having a hard time. You may be struggling with things. Here's what the Lord spoke to me. It's hard to worship when you're given the Lord's bread to foxes. It's hard to worship when you're given what belongs to God to the foxes. If you'll quit feeding the foxes, amen, the Lord, amen, will help you. In your situation. We find today in this gospel of John. I've been reading the gospels. Here recently. And I find that. um, It's just. uh, Quite a revelation. That each time you read. The word of God. That it's almost new. And there are things as you read the gospel that the Lord brings to your attention that maybe you've never noticed, paid attention to, or or intellectually just grabbed hold of. But as I was reading here in this first chapter of John the other day, I, I looked and I saw when they asked John who he was, I saw very quickly who John said he wasn't. There are a lot of times in life where we would like to be somebody else. Or we have an idea of somebody we'd like to be. We give a description of what we think we'd like or what we think we are. But maybe that's not just the truest picture of who we really are. 
But John was quickly to come to the conclusion that no, I'm not Elijah. Now Jesus tells us in the Gospels that John did come in the office and the ministry of Elijah, but he's not Elijah. He came in the same spirit of Elijah, but he's not Elijah. So that was Jesus' testimony of John. John was quick to say that he wasn't the Christ, that there was not anything about him that could compare into the glory of who Jesus Christ was. John was also quick to denote that he was one that baptized with water, but yet there was one that was coming after he that would baptize not only with water, but with the Spirit. And what would that Spirit declare unto you and I? That Spirit would declare that His baptism was a baptism of cleanliness, a baptism of holiness, a baptism of spiritual awakening, that they would know the Lord as they had never known Him before. This morning, I'm going to step into uh, a place today. When I got to studying this, I fell into a deep hole. I really did. I I got into something that, you know, I just... uh, It was really... Really, really big. And and I've really tried to condense this this morning. And so I may preach a little different this morning because I'm really not so used to preaching with a lot of notes. But nevertheless, I'm going to depend on the Lord to help me because this is going to be important to you and I as Christians. And this is going to be important to you and I to help us in our witness. And this is going to be important to you and I Amen. As we go forward and we encounter people who come across with different ideals about salvation, we're going to have to know who we are. We're going to have to know what we are. And we're going to have to know why we are that. It just, the answer that it's just what I've always been is not sufficient. The answer is what I grew up and what I've been taught. So that's just the way it was always was, is not sufficient. That worked 30 years ago, 40 years ago, but that doesn't work now. You've got to have a biblical answer. You've got to have a standing firm ground or standing on firm ground. Amen. Of who you are and why you are that. Because there are so many thought processes today in this world about Jesus Christ, about religion, about Christianity in general, amen, that it behooves us to be educated to a point that we can unequivocally unequivocally say, I'm Christ's. And there's a reason why I belong to Jesus Christ. This morning for a few moments, I want to investigate with you, amen, what we understand today as the five paths to God. There are five paths to God. Now I'll go ahead and preface this by saying that not all of these paths lead you to God. To revelation. To deliverance. But these are ways that men have tried to understand God and have put out as a platform for people to find who God is. The first one we would look at today is intuition. We all have intuition that we can perceive things, that things come to us, that we can bring or come to a conclusion. And intuition is simply an indwelling sense of God. And there are those who have made an acquaintance of God, but that's all that they had. And normally, they are those that wind up practicing idolatry. I want you to understand today that you cannot come to God by intuition alone. You cannot come to God by perceived thought and and try to figure things out and try to reason who God is. It will lead us into a place. Because the Bible tells us the depths of God are unknown. That God is so big that man cannot understand God. 
And you say, well, Brother David, why are you telling us today? Because these things affect you. Because you're running into people today that are tell you they're right with God, but they're all wrong with God. Their life doesn't bear the fruit of the witness of who Jesus Christ is. It's one thing to say you're a Christian, but it's another thing to be a Christian. Right? Amen. We'd all love to be able, it's just how I opened up. We'd all love to be able to say what we think we are. But we are what we do. We are how we act. We are how we carry out things. And if we're careless with the gospel, we're careless in our life with Jesus Christ the Lord. I want you to understand today that the path of intuition is a path of death. A path of intuition is a path of fruitlessness. It is a path of frustration that will only lead you to open the door. Amen. To many ideals because you cannot settle in your heart that there's one true God. I would look to you and say that the Hindus would be one. That you could say that intuition is one of their great paths because the Hindus honor many gods. They honor every god. They don't, they don't dispel not one. But they are, they just have a pantheon of of gods. And so they have missed the mark in the Lord Jesus Christ. The second one is reason. Reason involves the philosophers. And the outcome of reason leads us to disappointment. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 tells us the world by wisdom knew not God. So man's wisdom, the Bible is telling us, man's wisdom is vain. We find that Paul ran into this in Athens. When Paul was in a, there and going to witness about Jesus Christ, and Paul found the altar of the unknown God in the book of Acts in chapter 17. And Paul began to tell this group of philosophers, this group of reasoners, amen, about the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a Greek poet by the name of Simonides. He was asked to define God. After several weeks of meditation about who God is, Simonides said, the more I think of Him, the more He is unknown. I want you to know today that our reason cannot search out and grasp who God is. Is God is the greatest expanse. He's bigger than the universe. He is the controller of the universe. And our finite minds cannot grab hold, amen, of the reality of the vastness of who God is. The third one we look at would be our senses, our five senses. And this would relate to physical science. And so we think about this, that the conclusions, uh, that it's based on the conclusions of the evidence of physical science, and this conclusion rules out the evidence or the thought of faith. And so what does the Bible say about faith? The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith, a man, a woman, a child cannot be born again. We cannot base, amen, our belief in God on nature. We cannot allow, amen, that to help us. We are given a sixth sense, amen, that is, that is given us to apprehend what we would call spiritual truths. That sixth sense indeed is faith. Man is born with an inherent nature to have faith. But men rule out the fifth sense. This would be where Darwin comes in. Where Darwin comes in, amen, with the theory of evolution. But if you were to explore the theory of evolution and what he says that... that uh, the creation comes out of chaos and you go back, amen, through all of that chaos, through the explosions and to the atoms and the molecules. 
when you get to the very last one, at the beginning of it, it would cry out, it was God. I want you to understand today, church, amen, that there are those today that rely on the natural to understand the supernatural, which is virtually impossible. Then we come, amen, to the one that is pertinent to you and I, amen, the path of revelation. And revelation just simply means an unveiling, amen. We have, amen, a road map of that. It's called the Bible. The Bible is the revelation of God. It starts out in Genesis 1 and 1 saying, In the beginning God created the heaven and earth. It follows that in course in the Bible by setting forth two precedents of doctrines for you and I. First of all, amen, the doctrine of creation, that everything in the universe has its origin in the creative power of God. Secondly, amen, it sets forth the doctrine of providence, that everything is sustained by the providence of God. Does that make sense to you this morning? Amen. That we rely, fully rely, amen, on the power of God. That in the beginning God constructed this. God made this. This is according to God's order. And it is sustained by God's Word. That is His providence. We understand today, amen, that this is the sum and substance of the Bible. But in all of this, in the middle of His creation and His providence, we have a revelation of another figure, a man called Emmanuel. In Matthew 1 and 23, it is revealed to us that Mary would have a son, and this son would be the Savior of the world, and his name would be called Emmanuel, which interpreted just means to you and I, God with us. This makes our acquaintance with Him, amen, and with His Word, the incarnate Word of God. He was a spirit, but yet He was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ became incarnate. Christ is the Word. He is our providence today. He is our revelation of God. He is the mouth. The voice, the presence of God Almighty. And so we understand today that things have to be revealed to us. And we have to accept the revelation of who God is. You say, Brother Dave, why are you taking the time to tell us this today? Because we need to understand. This is not gibberish. This is not something just to fill time. This is not something just to bore you, but if you could grab hold of it today, this would enrich your soul. It will enrich your walk with Jesus Christ the Lord to understand today the pains that God went to to help us to understand who He is. I want you to know today that God is not withholding Himself to us, from us, when we look for Him in the right way. When we approach Him in the vein of holiness, when we approach Him in the vein of Scripture, when we approach Him in the vein, amen, of His commandments, amen, He will not withhold Himself from us, but yet He will reveal Himself to us in His glory. We will partake in His glory. We will revel in His glory. And we will live in His glory. And we will ultimately become His glory. Amen. Now that should have made you shout, and it didn't. The revelation of God. And then we find the fifth path is the incarnation. The way that all truth seekers must pursue if we're to come to a just and saving knowledge of God. Jesus came to us with the express pur purpose of making us known or making God known to us. 
You read in the Bible in John chapter 1 and verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. It was Christ's purpose to make God known to us. He is real. He is tangible. He is a spirit. But He is omnipresent. He is there. And Jesus is declaring that to you and I. Jesus is alluded to the Word because He is, amen, the medium of communication between the infinite and the finite. Jesus took on man's body to be a mediator for you and I. That deserved the amen and you're just sitting there. Jesus took the great sacrifice. Jesus took the great step downward from the portals and the riches of glory to come and step into the cesspool of man's sin so that He could communicate God's desires to man and man's need to God. The incarnation of Christ. Amen. When we say that, talk about the incarnation of Christ, it is just simply saying the articulation of the speech of God. You read in John chapter 1 and verse 1, what does it say? In the beginning, once again, in the beginning. How ironic is this, was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Genesis says, in the beginning God created. But John says, in the beginning was the Word. It is, amen, a doubling down. Amen of the authenticity. Amen of the creation. Amen that God made this earth, that He was there, and that He was the preeminent, and His Son, Jesus Christ, was with Him. Amen. It wasn't one body and three personalities. We are not of the oneness faith. We are a trinity believing people. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We believe there's three chairs on the throne of God, with God entrenched in the middle. Jesus at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Ghost of God sitting at His left hand. And the Lord is verifying unto you and I that in the beginning we were there. I was speaking then and I'm still speaking now. John 1 and 14 tells us this. He said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He said, We beheld His glory. Jesus was saying, or John was saying, that when we cast, or when they cast their eyes upon Jesus Christ, they were seeing nothing but the glory of God. That God had bestowed His glory upon His Son for man. Amen. To be revealed unto Him. Amen. Just how great God is. And so we understand by the pathways of revelation and incarnation. That the Lord has told us just who He is. He has helped us to understand just what He is. And now begs the question, who are we? Who are we? We are the sons and the daughters of God. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. We have not evolved from cells of some kind of amoeba in a swamp. It has not taken millions of years for us to evolve into this state. I don't have an ape that's my cousin. I don't have a salamander that's my uncle. I don't have a cell somewhere that's my grandfather. My father is in heaven. My creator is in heaven. He shaped us in the womb. You remember what he told Jeremiah? I shaped thee in the womb and before thou was ever conceived, I put a calling upon your life. 
We have a calling today, a man of the Lord God of heaven, to intimately know who He is, to understand that He is the King of glory, that He is the God of gods, that there is no other God like Him, that His Son is indeed the Savior of the world, that His Son will be the righteous judge, that His Son will grant us entrance into the kingdom of God, that His Son doth require us to have faith and believe in Him and acknowledge Him as the only begotten God, the only begotten Son that, amen, there is no other way to God but by through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You won't be born again. Amen. You won't be changed. You won't be quickened without the power of the Son of God in your heart and your life today. Can I tell you, we know who He is, but who are we? As John said, he said, I am a voice. I'm a voice of one crying in the wilderness. What is the wilderness? The wilderness is the world that we're living in. Because this world is polluted with pitfalls. This world is polluted with wickedness. This world is polluted with the traps of the enemy. Amen. That He's put before the feet of God's creation. But we've got to understand today that that voice, amen, being a voice for Jesus Christ the Lord leads us into a place where we're not, hey, we don't have to fall into the pitfalls of the enemy. Who am I today? First of all, I want you to understand I am Christ. I have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. I have accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. I have acknowledged Him as the only God. There are no other gods. God said that He scoffed at these other gods. He laughs at these other gods. There is no other God is what the Almighty said. And I submit to you today, we should have no other respect for any other religion. We should have no respect for any Anything that does not edify Jesus Christ and the blood. Amen. That does not tell us that there's only one way and it's Jesus. I'm telling you we should have no affinity, affection or whatever. Amen. Because Jesus is the only way. I understand people have been taught things. Uh, but the Bible is very clear to you and I. The Word is very clear unto you and I. That no man shall see God lest they come by the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. So who am I? I'm blood washed. I'm blood bought. I'm purchased today by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm committed to a cause that causes me to eschew evil. I'm committed to a cause today that causes me to turn my back on sin. I was once like the world, but I don't want to be like the world anymore. I don't want to participate in the depravity of sin anymore. Oh, but I want to swim in the pool of the righteousness of God. I want to wade in the waters of His holiness. I want to allow the Spirit of God to consume me and lead me in the pathways of righteousness. I want to walk on that highway that Isaiah talked about. That highway of holiness where no unclean thing shall be found. Who am I? I'm a lover of of God. I'm a committed to God. I'm a believer today who believes everything that the Lord has said. Who believes that He is faithful and true. Who believes that He's just and He's merciful. Who believes that He's my all in all and He's my everything today. Who am I? I'm convinced that He is the Christ. What is your declaration? How do you feel about Jesus Christ? He's the most important one that has ever happened in our life. There are those that love their spouse. There are those that love their children more than they love God. But may I tell you today, they all they all fail in comparison to who God is. He is the ultimate. 
ultimate of my love. He is the ultimate of my attention today. He is the one who died for me because He loved me in my sin. If you do not love Him preeminently, if you do not love Him first, you do not know Him. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Come on, worship church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, the Holy Ghost is in this place this morning. Come on, worship Him. Mm. Mm. Feed the Spirit with your praise. Feed the Spirit with your worship this morning. Come on church, worship God. Worship God. Get your mind on the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Is somebody here, you're feeding foxes. You need to be feeding the Spirit. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the great I am. And because He is the great I am, He told Moses to go before Pharaoh and you said, tell him that the I am sent you. I want you to understand because He is the great I am. I am. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. Amen. Because of His power this morning. Can you worship God today? Amen. Because you are His. The Lord has spoken to me. He said, I am the Lord. I have put all these things in place. Uh, worship me. Glorify me. And I will exalt you. I will lift you up and draw you nigh to me. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, the Spirit calls you. The Spirit woos you this morning to worship Him as the Almighty God. Thank you for your confirmation. Thank you for your confirmation. 
You say, Brother David, I don't understand these things this morning. I don't understand the Spirit. That is the Spirit of reason. That is the aspect of your trying to figure out God with your intellectual power. You'll never be able to do it. But if you'll just invoke faith. If you'll just call upon faith. That faith that says, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe you can do what is impossible for man. I believe, Lord. Amen. You're able to do anything you want to do, Lord. Help my unbelief. Help, Lord, my wavering. Oh, God. Amen. Give me. Amen. That steadfastness in my heart, in my mind, that helps me not to deny you in any fashion. Let's everyone stand together and raise our hands to heaven. Everyone that can possibly stand. Let's worship God this morning. Who are you today? Who are you today? The Lord has spoken to us through His Word today. And very clearly identified who He is. And has given us the capacity for us to identify in Him. I identify as a child of God. I identify as a born again believer. That cross is a part of where I came from. That empty tomb is a part of where I came from. It's why I exist today. Because of Him. I am His. Are you His this morning? Are you His this morning? Do you belong to Jesus this morning? Can you tell the world? Can you tell your friend? Can you tell that one that doesn't believe? I belong to Jesus! The Spirit's here to help this morning. He's here to help you. And you feel Him dealing in your heart. Today's the day. You need to let the world know who you are. Who you want to become. And who you strive to be. That child of God with no reservations. That child of God with no doubts. That child of God with no buts or ifs. I believe in whom I've trusted. The altars are open this morning. If you've been feeding the foxes, it's a prime time to come cut them off. I've obeyed the Lord this morning, church.